Hey, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. We've got another video here. Um, in this video, I build this piece right here. Um, it's a part that I've been talking about off and on for a while now. Now it's built. Uh, I'm using the, my arm for a tripod right now because I don't have a lot of room in here. We had a big snowstorm and my wife's car is in the, in the garage. So there wasn't enough room to do a, a back view. So sorry about you having to look at my ugly mug this close. But anyway, that's what this video is about, is this piece right here. I uh, got it done. Um, it turned out well, except for one part of it that I'll explain in the video. And a little quiz in there for anybody that wants to try to answer the question. And uh, enjoy it. Thanks a lot. All right, I'm doing some welding. I'm getting this back panel welded in. I did the spots on the top and now I'm going for, I primed it, I should talk about that a little bit first, I primed all the contact areas with a self etching primer so and like I said I, I did all these spots up here, uh, plug welds and now I'm going to do these plug welds down in here, I'm working my way down and I measured the distance from here over to the to that flange that's 13 and a half inches and I measured the distance from here to the bot to the to inside this uh, inner wheelhouse extension and that's 10 inches and I took those measurements from that side that I haven't touched so it's within you know an eighth of an inch or so so I think it'll be fine give or take a little bit of uh, seam sealer and that kind of thing so yeah so I'll get these done and we'll continue on once I get this piece in this this ties this whole corner together so this becomes rigid again so I just wanted to mention now that I primed it I have this uh, bit that I flattened off and that's how I clean out those uh, the primer out of those uh, plug weld holes so I'll start over on that side over there and then I'll keep I'll put some clamps on and I'll get them all tight and I run hot on the welder I'm running at uh, three quarters of the, my selection up and running some pretty high wire feed you can see up here like some of these are almost flat because like this one here is really hot it just melted right in and that's not gonna that's definitely bonded one of them broke through on me I forget which one it was doesn't matter one I had to do some fancy footwork to get it back but I know it's welded good it's solid so that's how I do it you can see how it, it actually pushed out a little bit maybe you can tell or not but you can feel the feel the penetration on it right through and I like that that's why I use high heat but short bursts see the heat pattern I welded all these other ones from the other side as well so that's it she stiffened this old baby up a lot oh you can shake the whole car there's no uh, no give there now all right so now let's get on this piece get it built working on this piece so I thought what I would do, because I have a duplicate over here, a mirror image of it, I would pull this bracket off here. It has to come off anyhow. So I thought I would just take it off now and tuck it away, and then I can get some uh, measurements, good measurements off this, this piece that's the mirror of this. So that's what I'm up to. Shouldn't be too big of a job, a few spot welds here and there. And I'll have her off in no time at all. Got this piece off right here. Got a lot of uh, good information in this piece, more than the other side. So I have lots to work with there. Well, there we go. I uh, figured I would, rather than make a paper template at this point in time, I would just pound this piece out and then I have the actual size. So that's what I've done. I put a couple of Clico holes in so I know it returns there all the time. Plus I, I took out this alignment hole. 
ground it out and I made this edge the baseline. So this is all baseline stuff here now. <clears throat> so I know where the beads start on this. So now I can go over to the car and measure both the length of these beads off the other side and I'll get a fairly accurate measurement of them with the fabric tape and then I'll know where they terminate here and I can mark that in. So that's what I'm going to do right now and uh, understand how far I need to make these beads. Now on the car it is still curved so I'm going to have to allow a little bit for the curve in length because Oh, they should still be right. No, I shouldn't have to allow anything. <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to do. Go measure them up with the fabric tape. All right. So I went over and I did the measurements. Hopefully you can see the measurements. But anyway, this, <clears throat> this side over here, which is the closest to the bulkhead or the uh, luggage compartment panel, is 10 inches. And I measured on the flat, so I get the, uh, not in here, I didn't measure the rib, I measured the flat. <clears throat> so, so, I take my fabric, and I did the curve, so I take my fabric tape to where it looks like the top, which I can still see the, the little, like the, like the fingernail lip of it, and that's what I did over there. And I go down to 10 inches. This piece may not be quite long enough, but anyway, that's okay. We can add some on. So, right there is the 10 inch mark. And this one is eight and a quarter. Over here where I can see it better. Eight and a quarter. About like that and follow that along so eight and a quarter it was actually a little bit more than just a shade more than eight and a quarter so that gives me the bead length so now I can put a mark on to show how far these need to go This is just for a guide, that's not going to be a super accurate, but it'll be a good guide. So when I make the beads, I know to stop. Stop right here, right there. Up here, I already know the tops. I put a mark in, I don't, you can, it's covered underneath, but I have a cross line to stop me there. So that's what the beads need to be. Now, since I don't have a bead, roller that's flat like these were, I'll use a stepper dies and I'll, I'll just step each side. So they'll, I mark the base, the bottom in here of what it needs to be, the width here. That's what this line is, this width here. So it's still going to gather some material from there. So the whole thing's going to take a little bit more material to get down to where it was. I want it fairly accurate but I'm not too concerned if this is exactly a, a mirror image of what's on the car. But I want it, you know, I want it as close as I can get it. So let's go do that. So now I know I need to put the beads in. I'm probably going to have to flip it on the other side and do all this. But if I punch it, I've seen guys, they'll punch the spots. I think Fitzy does it. I've seen a few, quite a few people die. Quite a few people will punch. Uh, little indent so they know where these lines are on the other side it makes it easier to lay them out so I'm going to do that anyway because I know at some point I'm going to have to flip this over and do something so if I punch on each little intersection I know that that's the intersection for that whole thing so let me do that and uh, we'll get on to the bead roller once I get it set up all right you probably can't see it but I went ahead and punched it all there's a little yeah, you can see them if I tip it the right way. So I have this whole chunk of leather right here. And I like it. It came, I had it when I bought a uh, bunch of auction stuff it was in with it. I use it a lot actually for this kind of thing. So 
even a piece of an old leather sofa, a genuine leather sofa, sofa would work well. Anyway, they come in handy, these little scraps of leather. So I used the punch, my old uh, injector needle punch. And then I went over and I just transferred it over to the other side because I, my experience with bead rolling, I almost always mark the wrong side. So now I have both sides marked. So that's great. So now I can uh, get the bead roller set up and I can start doing these steps. All right, let's do that. So I got that done, like I was saying. But uh, it's a little tight in here today. I got the wife's cars in here. We had a lot of snow last night. We'll go show you what we're dealing with today and it's a job that needs to get done a little later on. So yeah, the old driveway is getting kind of full. So, there's the old Ranchero. So I got a little bit of shoveling to do today. See my neighbors over there shoveling. <laughs> it's fluffy, light and fluffy. But, we won't be long, we'll be through the snow. Alright, back to the park. I went with the joggle dies. And I wanted to, to be able to follow, I'll just show you, I'll shove this in here behind the camera. So I wanted to be able to follow the inside line because I didn't mark the outer line. So now I have them set up that I can follow this inside line like so with a flat. And of course now this is offset. Now these are both flat surfaces so when I bring it down I should be able to bring the, the step down. So these are, I'm using these in reverse of how they're meant to be used. <clears throat> but as near as I can make out with most of these dies, it, the imagination is really only that limits you. So whatever works for a guy or a girl, go for it. It doesn't matter as far as I'm concerned. If it works, it works. I'm trying to give you guys as much vantage point as I can with this. So I get some gloves on. Got my uh, piece, so now like I said, I'm following this, this lip here. We'll follow this and then when I get to do the other side, I'm gonna have to flip it around. Or flip it over, but flip it around and do the same. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start, <clears throat> I'm gonna start with the outer one and work my way out so the metal doesn't, because this is gonna, this will distort the metal some. So, I'll get her brought down to where I think it needs to be. So there I'm, I'm firm on the metal right there now. So if I go a full turn, there's half and there's a full turn, that won't be quite enough. So I'm going to go turn and a half on it. Adjust the speed down. I'm going to go slow at first. I may have to speed it up. So let's go. So I think that's working pretty good. I think that's just depth of, the depth of that bead that I need, or that offset. But don't run into you guys. There. So that's a turn and a half from touching the metal. So if I turn it around, I can go a turn and a half. So I'm on the metal. I gotta try to keep it level because that's how it works. So now a turn and a half. So there's one turn and another half turn. That seems to be good. Like I said, this will distort the metal. I'm not gonna get away from that. What I'm after is the step. And if I get the step in there, the rest I can deal with with the uh, body hammer. Alright. Is it perfectly straight? No, it's not. It's a little bit narrower and wider. But again, I'm not too worried about that. This is all hidden stuff. 
But I am concerned about it not going far enough because I didn't go back far enough on it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tighten it back down again and just bring it back some. So I'm going to go in reverse because I, I didn't start far enough back, I don't think. There. I think that looks pretty good. This could come forward a little bit. So let's do that. Not that one. This one here needs to go back some where I started. All right. A little bit more. There. That's not bad. Like I said, it's a little, you can see that. This end is a little narrower than that end. But again, I'm not too worried about it. All right, let's do another one. Same dealio. This time I'm starting back just a little further. So I'm down the metal. So there's one turn and there's a half turn. So one and a half turns. And I put it in forward. The speed seemed to be good for me. I wasn't too woggly with it. So I do need better glasses on because I can barely see that line. And I can freshen this all up with uh, body hammer and stuff. No problem. There's one. One and a half. Oh, going a little too far. There we go. Alright, here we go again. tendency to go narrow on these I don't know why <laughs> like as you go I want to be narrower that's okay there we got some beads in steps I guess it is more than beads so like I say it it, it warped the panel a little bit but this panel this needs to be folded right over like that anyway Actually up here is where it folds right over. This folds right over the top part. This, this is the top. And the bottom actually has a break in it as well for that uh, wheelhouse extension. Hopefully you can see that. All right, so the bead rolling portion is done. A little freshening up maybe. You can see where I got, I think it's my marks were off on the other side. That's okay. Like I said, I'm not looking for exactly the same, but as long as it's, reasonably close and has the strength because that's what this is for strength i'm good and it really did stiffen that panel up a lot oh by the dying all right so let's put her back you see how close we made it well there she is remounted back on the with the old piece and that's not too bad i'm pretty happy with that how it flows right into those uh original ones they stop right there this one here on the car this actual part of the bead, because this gets folded right back here or so, this this roll where it rolls over, where it gets broke around on it, because it starts to bend right there, it actually takes the top of the this bead here and rolls it over with it. Don't know if that was really necessary. I probably could have terminated them both right here and it would have been easier to work with. But I have it there now and that's the way it was. These seem to be pretty decent. I may end up welding a little bit of metal on here, but we'll see. So now, um, I know all the metal I need is there, except for maybe down here, like I mentioned. All the rest of the stuff is there. So now I can start cutting this out to fit. So I can start cutting this off, cut this little notch out. I won't cut anything down here just yet. But I'll just, I'll cut this as if, actually I'll only cut it to there for now. So I don't know for sure how much I need down there. So I'm just going to leave this. And I don't know over here because what happens with this one, when it, when it gets broke, which it gets broke right around here, this part here has to come, this goes straight out on the bottom. This piece here is straight, but then this piece, it rolls inward. 
So there's a bit of forming that has to happen here, right here in this spot. But I'll break the brakes, do the brakes that I need to do, and I can form it after over a, do over a piece of round rod or something just to get it straight. I've got it rolled over, or this is what I've been doing. I use my rail track and I'm just forming it over. And before I took it off, took the old piece off, I etched in the old spot weld area uh, for the, uh, the quarter panel supports. Now, this panel is looking pretty good, but there's a mistake in this panel. A major mistake. And I'm going to keep moving ahead with this panel because it's mostly made. And it, the mistake won't affect how it fits on the car, but there is a major mistake in this panel. And anybody that spots it, put it in the comments. Because there is a mistake. And it's, very, it's a significant mistake in a place where you don't have room to work. All right, so I'll leave it at that. So now, with that said, I'm gonna to have to measure down. I'll measure again, I should have done it when I was there. I did a rough measurement. Oh, sorry, right there. But now I'm gonna go back to the car and I'm gonna measure this bead down to where the brake starts. So when it's sitting on the car like this, because this is how this one will sit, so this is the forward, facing forward on the car. This is facing the back. This is the little alignment notch for the quarter panel. The very back. This is where the taillights and everything would go. This actually sits. Sits like this. It's rolled. And because it's rolled, it comes in like this. And then this has to be broke outward again to go on to the uh, flange. And then this whole area, uh, to the uh, outer wheelhouse extension. And then this area right here needs to be formed to bring part of it, this part back around because it wraps around onto uh, the rear rock guard, rock shield, balance. So that's how that works. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and make a measurement to where I put, to put the brake. And then once I get that measurement in, based off of actual part, I'll roll it over a propane tank or something to get the to get this radius in it. And that panel will be done, minus the mistake that's in it. But I'm not worried about the mistake. But it is a significant mistake that you wouldn't want to have happen in other circumstances. So let me get that done. So what I have is, so again, this is how it sits. And you can see that. This is, this is forward in the car. This will have a roll this way. But because it rolls this way, the bottom of the panel needs to come back to a, a 90 again on this brake line. So I have uh, 10 inches. Don't, don't look at these. But there's a mark here at 11 inches and there's a mark here at 10 inches. And that's what I, mar I measured off the other side. So I'm shooting for this mark here and this mark there to fold this. So this has to be broke this way. So because it's like that, I can put it in the in the in the in the brake upward like this on those two marks and give it a quick bend. This may need to be readjusted, that's fine. I'm used to readjusting my stuff. <laughs> you make mistakes. Knowing when to fix the mistake is important, but uh, that's it. So, so just double check, make sure it's the right way. So if you flip this around and put a curve in it, this will be the right way. So again, make a mistake, I'll fix it. And it doesn't have to go all the way up, it's just a slight bend and I can always add a little more after. There we go. So, so that's it. So now when I, when I bend this, I, this outward, I'll probably have to do a little more bend this way on this, but we'll see. I just wanted to get the line in there for now. All right, so let me put this over a propane tank or something and get this roll in it. And then I'm gonna have to fit it on 
on the, probably fit it in with the old quarter panel to get the, uh, the shape. Actually, the new piece I built has the shape. So let's do that because this it would it has the arch there. So I'll just form it with that. And if I have to do any tweaking out here with the quarter panel, that's easy enough to do too. All right, so let's get on to that. Well, let's see if we can get some uh, a little bit of this forming done. I need a pipe anvil. That's what I need. But for now, I'm just going to use this propane tank. Like I said, it has to curve this way. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. So all I'm doing, I'm just starting to roll it in. And I want it, well, the roll has to be relatively square to, the, to, the, to this, like the upper part. So I'm going to try to keep it as straight as I can. You can feel it bending just you only bend it enough so it rolls it doesn't kink as soon as it kinks you're in trouble all right so we're starting to get her needs a little more up top and it started I could feel it starting to kink there so I had to stop there so now I'm going to take this over and see if it, and fit it on the car on this part on the piece that I made so you can see how what I was talking about how this piece starts lying up because it needs to be at a 90 up and down with the car to fit on that outer that uh, wheelhouse extension this may need a little more or maybe it has too much so I'm going to go check it and I'll be right back she's starting to fit in so what I did here as I explained earlier about the bends and stuff let me get this stuff out of the way. Just hold on. I got walking hazards. Step hazards. Alright, got the step hazard out of the way. So what I did, and I think this looks pretty good. I, uh, of course, you can see I clamped it and it forms with the other one. Now, I can see it's already not going to be long enough to do what I want. It's just a shade too short. You can see down here how it's not coming down. This needs to be, this will be welded in with these other ones between the two, uh, it'll be welded between the two uh, wheel extensions. Man, the words aren't coming. Anyway, so what I did, let's get back to it. I took my square and I put the square along, square with the, uh, I didn't account for this. I just took the original parts from where the original parts were to the original parts, because this was monkeyed with a bit. And it needs to be uh, tapped back down some. So what it did, and I did this on the other side and it turns out it's five and a half inches and so let's go over and look just because it's good to look because sometimes you get it wrong so when I did it over here I had to use the metric side of the, of the square but you can see how I lined it up with the old undisturbed uh, trunk lid rail and then I put a mark over here and then I took my measure and I measured in, get the right one, and then I measured in to that mark, like so, out to, out to where the original was sitting on this side. And that's all I really have to go with. And it works out, it's hard to tell here, it works out to five and a half inches is the distance out. You, you might be able to see that, yeah. So five and a half inches is pretty much the distance from that base point line that I put on to where the quarter panel goes. So let me come over here. I could have done it in metric, but I wanted to do it in uh, imperial, or uh, yeah, imperial, just for the sake of most of my viewers are from the U.S. I do have some metric ones for sure, no doubt about that. So anyway. And then I bring it over here and I bring it back to where it's supposed to be. And it's pretty, I got it at five and a half inches. I mean, it's a shade maybe short. So there's the five and a half inch mark. Ah, when I bring the phone over, you'll see what I mean. Because the, the camera's offset, so it gives you guys the wrong perspective. So there it is. So now I'm going to Clico. And if you see how close this really is, I don't know if you can see or not. There's the etching I put in for the original uh 
the original uh, spot welds, or yeah, spot welds were right there. So it's pretty darn close. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to Clico it there. I'll put a couple of Clico holes in, maybe through the flange actually. That way I can keep it from twisting. So if I go Clico holes through here, through the flange area, and then it'll always sit right, and maybe one up here. So if I put at least three in, I can always get that back. Because this will be coming off and on a few times yet. And then, once I do that, I'll just trim this all off. And I have to make sure that this is at a 90, which I'll have to check that. I'll get a, I've got a, a long T-square, and I can do that, and I can measure. I can do this side to make sure what it's actually at, and it looks to be pretty much a 90 to me with the floor. But this one doesn't look perfect, like 90. So it probably has to come out a little bit on the back, on the bottom. Goes to the, has to go that that way a little bit on the bottom. So before I put the the clicos in in the flange area, I'll put a, a clico in to hold the top in one spot up here, and then I'll move that back to where it needs to be at 90, and then clico the other, clamp it and clico it. All right, let me get it done. All right, I got her all clicoed in. Now, this is where all the fine tuning happens. And you'll see that my, my bend, my brake that I put in it, is too high. It needs to go down and it needs to go underneath. Let's go to the other side and have a look. It needs to, it needs to be here, that brake. So I put a mark in it. And I'm just going to run an equal amount up here. So this is from, I measured it from the bottom down on the other side and it's eight and a half inches and I only have it at eight inches. So I need to add that extra half inch on that line. That's easy. I'll just tap that back out on the, with the body hammer and then I'll break it there. But like I said, there's going to need to be a little more put on. This is too long here yet. This needs to be cut off. So that has to be done as well. So I need to trim that off. And then this will come down, uh, I believe it comes down level with uh, the bottom of the outer of the uh, wheelhouse extensions. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll get it the brake where it needs to be and then I'll decide how much metal I have to put back on there. This will probably be fine here, but this is going to be too short. There, that's a better fit. I've got her right down in that where it needs to be and uh, I think I don't I think I'll just straighten this out from here back to there so it fits in between the two panels nicely and that'll be good enough for that I don't think I need to do add any more on there's no reason to it comes flush with this good so now I've got to deal with this I'm gonna measure a few more measurements before I start putting the forming this piece in. But I'm going to go over to the other side and show what I'm talking about. So this is this uh, piece that I broke on that piece on the other side. And it wraps around and then it goes back. This, right on the end, this continues, this bent, but it continues more like this around and then it goes in and turns into there and then down. So it all has to just make this little, if you come up here, you'll see this little step that needs to be in it. A little bit of forming, but it can be done. But I just need to get a few measurements. I need to measure the length from, from the bulkhead back and from here back just to get a, a good shot at it. Well, there she is. I think it turned out quite well. I trimmed her back on the here, so this is fitting now nicely. This fits good up in here. Short of the mistake I made, it looks pretty darn good. And then over on this side, you can see where I formed. I formed that piece just to wrap around to meet the 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 rock rock guard or balance rock shield or balance. Sorry however you want to call it. I think in the books it's called a rock shield. So that's it. 
that part's made. So now I won't weld that on yet until I put the outer uh, wheelhouse extension on, back on, and it all has to work in conjunction with that, the rock shield, and the old quarter panel. So there's a lot, there's going to be a lot of off and on for this piece yet, probably. But that's it. Uh, another piece built. And I uh, really appreciate everyone for coming along for the ride. And if you haven't subscribed and you like what I'm doing, subscribe. And hit the notification bell and you'll get uh, a notification, hopefully, on uh, more content that I'm putting out. Because there will be more content. This is an ongoing project. Alright, thanks a lot everyone. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.